Okay, so where we left off last time, we had created a Flask application that was responding to an HTTP request and returning with just the string hello David in that particular situation. And you can see that that's the state we're at right now. If we did want to change that, all we need to do is change the string. We'll have to stop and restart Flask in order for those changes to be picked up. And when we retrieve that data, sure enough, we're returning Quaka, which is the stuff that I had changed it to. Now, if we want to return something a little bit more interesting, then what I'm going to do is take some code from the teaching classes and I'm going to paste it in. This is actually a dictionary which has a device information in it and I'm going to return this dictionary instead of just a string. And Flask is smart. It can change and marshal the dictionary into the appropriate JSON so that it gets received by the browser. Um, that looks reasonably well. If you look closely, you can kind of see that the data is pretty much the same. But before we go too much further, I want to introduce you to a better way to do that, and that is using a tool we call Postman, or whoever created it, called Postman. And this is a tool that is going that allows us to make HTTP requests of any type that we want and to get information back in an intelligent manner. So I've installed it. I'm going to launch it right now, and then I will pin it or add it to our favorites so that it is over there on the left. Here it is loading. Once it is loaded, what we're going to do is go to the application. I'm not going to save anything here. And I'm going to create requests. And so what Postman will allow you to do is to do get or post or any other type of request. All you have to do is type in the URL. In our situation, it's localhost 5000, just like it was in the browser. And as you can see, I made the request to the Quaka that we're working on. And sure enough, it returned this dictionary. It's actually JSON data, but it was a dictionary when it was within the code within our little beginnings of doing Quaka. Now, just returning it from the root is a little bit unintelligent. So we're going to change the actual URL so that we're asking for a device. And when we make this request, you'll notice it's going to fail because we didn't add device to the end of this. When we add device to the end of the URL, you can see we get the response back as we would expect. When we go to Postman and do it, we're going to have the same situation. If we just make the request, we're going to get a 404 not found. We're going to have to change the actual URL to have device at the end of it. And once we've done that, then you'll see that we're getting the data back appropriately. Now, one of the things that we're going to want to do when we do these, uh, make these requests from Postman is we're going to want to save the information. So the way that you do that is you click on save. I'm going to create a collection called Quaka. Once I have created that collection, then I'm going to be able to select it and save my request to Quaka, then I can come back at any point in time and load that and do what I want with it. Okay, so the next thing I'm going to do is I am going to begin to create my directory and package structure that I'm using for Quaka. Remember, we've talked about model view controller type stuff. I'm going to create Python packages for controller and for model and for views. And so I'm going to end up putting that into my project as it is. And there's one other thing that I'm going to do. I'm going to create a directory. So I'm not doing a Python package. I'm just going to create a directory into which I'm putting my YAML files that are going to start me off. Things like the list of devices, the list of services, list of compliance things, etc. And so this is the file that I'm creating. I'm calling it devices.yaml. What I'm doing now that you can't see is I'm going and I'm copying from my actual project that I'm working on, uh, my file that has the YAML information about all of my different devices. So here you see the first device. Uh, here's the second one. You can see I have a transport of Napalm for some of them. I'm using netconf for others. And then for that 
SD-WAN type stuff, I'm using HTTP REST in order to do our access in a different manner. Okay, so what I'm going to do next is I'm going to turn our application into almost a kind of a real application. I'm going to read in all of those devices from the YAML file, and I'm going to return that to the user who calls into our REST API. So I'm creating a function called import devices. I'm hard coding the file name here, which I haven't done in the real Quokka, but for here, our purposes, it's satisfactory. I'm opening this file, which is devices.yaml that we just created. I'm using YAML functionality to do a safe load of that file, the devices file. I'm going to have to uh, import YAML. You can see the little red squiggly line underneath YAML. So I'm going to just do an import right there to import YAML. Now I have my function, which will hopefully return these devices if it works correctly. And I'm going to return those devices that we've uh, pulled out of the file. Now I'm going to go down and I'm going to get rid of, well, first I'm going to need to change my URL to devices. I'm going to get rid of that old one because we need to do something more intelligent to get a single device. We have to pass in the name or the ID here. It's simple. We're just going to let the user call into the devices. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to call my function import devices and then I'm going to return those devices. Now, the way that um, Flask works, I can return a dictionary or a string or a number. But I can't return a list. So I'm going to be returning an actual dictionary, which is going to get turned into a JSON object, and it will be a list of devices that will be provided to the caller. So I'm looking at my code right here, just going to clean it up a little bit before we go. And I'm going to have to stop uh, Flask and start it again. Now, at this point in time, I'm not sure that I've done my file for input and my function to import the devices correctly, but I'm running it and I'm calling it. And wow, look at that. There's a whole bunch of devices that got returned. And if you recall what we had in that file, then it is roughly similar to it. So I'm going to do this in Postman where it's a little bit easier to read. And you can see there's devices and then a list of all of these different devices that I had in the file. So we're actually doing something here. We went out to a file. We read in all of the devices from the file and we created an endpoint. And it is through that endpoint that the caller will be able to retrieve a list of devices from our application. So our little application is beginning to take shape. We are importing a list of devices from a file. We are returning that information when the user makes a request using our HTTP REST endpoint. And we are allowing Flask to transform our data structure, which is a dictionary with inside of that a list of devices into JSON, send it back to the browser. In this case, that's we're looking at it via Postman, but we saw it through a regular browser as well in order to get all of that information back. So it's a decent start at the beginning of our Quokka application. Next, we'll move on to some other things. We will tackle storing things in a database and adding status data, etc.